Your Hollywood system stole our sex and co-opted our violence, so there's nothing left for our kinds of movies. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's not true. Clopex. 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 Up yours, baby. Me and Bubba, my little brother, listen to you every night. Where in the hell are we? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of Cult Film and Review. I am your host, Cody Everett, and uh, this week we're doing a special tribute um, to the late, great uh, Roddy Roddy Piper, and uh, we're going to review They Live. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode. Um, This one's going to be really personal for me, so uh, I'm excited to talk about it. Without uh, any further ado, let's start the show. Welcome back to Cult Film and Review. Uh, we're here with the normal uh, group of uh, yahoos. So we're going to talk about uh, John Carpenter. I think that's the second time you've used that yeah, one. That's like the second yahoos. time. You're a big fan of the word yahoo. He's, He's a right. yahoo himself. He's yahoo himself, so he's going to use the word yahoo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about John Carpenter's um, Ghost of Mars. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're not I don't think they're ready for that one yet. Yeah, we're not talking about that. We're talking about They Live, guys. Uh, sci-fi movie uh, done with uh, Roddy Roddy Piper. Um Probably the only movie I know him from, except for uh, Hell Comes to Frogtown. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Great title. I, I love no that idea title. He was in anything else. Yeah, uh, he was in. Yeah, he's been in other movies. I did not. They, know made, that. And they, made, they made a sequel of that film. My brother just told me today. <laughs> they had a did sequel. they? Wow. Yeah, it was when that I, when I told him I was doing, we were doing Lay Live tonight. He how said, did, "How did Hell come back to Frogtown?" Is what I wanted. To I have know. no idea. <laughs> Hell hath no fury like like a town twice scorned. scorned. I don't know. <laughs> okay, make it up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fucking scorn of frogs. God. What about every time I hear Rowdy Roddy Piper's name, I think people are saying Roddy Roddy Piper. Anybody else ever? Roddy that? Rowdy. It's rowdy Rowdy it's Rowdy. rowdy. He's Rowdy. He's no, Rowdy. I or get it. I understand the why it's Rowdy Roddy Piper. But yeah. when you say it fast, it sounds like Roddy Roddy Piper. It does. <laughs> I agree. He's, he's so double Roddy. I agree. So much rods. So many rods. <laughs> <laughs> Just rodding out. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. I know. Terrible. It's your, one of your heroes, Cody, Cody, put us back on fucking schedule. It's one schedule. of your heroes. Put us back on schedule. Can I please? No, yeah. Please do. Schedule. Talk about R- Rowdy. Roddy, Roddy Piper. That's what I was going to talk about. Uh, I was going to talk about Roddy, Roddy Piper just passed uh, recently. Um, 61 years old. Had a heart attack in his sleep. Uh, for me, it was it, it was pretty hard. Like... Um, this is someone that I, I, I grew up um, idolizing. Uh, this is a person that, uh, to me, uh, I found amazing because he said whatever he wanted, and then he took shit from no one. Like, he could back up whatever he said. Did and he have, like, a crazy background, too? Yes. Like, yeah, he had a crazy background. I mean, Was he an orphan? He was an orphan in Canada. Um, started wrestling, I think, when he was, like, 15, and then... In the WWF? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, th- th- like just throughout the Indies, um, I guess he was pretty mistreated from what I understand until like Judo Jean LaBelle took him under his belt and then taught him how to defend himself. What do you mean by the wrestling rings or by like a stepfather? Or no, what? like so, like that, yeah, he was Judo Jean LaBelle was uh, a referee at the time, I believe, but is like a legitimate, like the god, they call him the godfather of MMA. Um, he has connections with Ronda Rousey also. I, I don't know what the connections are, but. Um, and basically what it was is, man, those, be- those dudes were beating him up and he was just a patsy and he was getting beat up and, you know, he basically was like, you need to learn how to defend yourself and taught him how to defend himself so he wouldn't get beat up and started getting some respect. But- so how famous was he in, in wrestling before John Carpenter Huge. asked him Huge. to do this? Roddy Piper Huge. is, so there's an argument, right? There's an argument throughout time because... WWE was resting everything on the first WrestleMania, right? If it was a failure, they were done. Out of business. Who did the first WrestleMania? WWE. No, I know, but who 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 fought? Who was, in it? Who was the headline? The yeah. headline was Hulk Hogan and and Roddy Piper. Okay. Okay. So that's what everybody talks about was who was really the success? Was it that 
everybody came to see Hulk Hogan? Or was it that everybody came to see Hulk Hogan beat up Roddy Piper? Well, which would mean they still went to go see Hulk Hogan. No. <laughs> because he so, was really so, good at getting beat up or something? No, because was he, he, was, heel? he was the such a bad guy. People, He was so good at making people hate him. Okay. So that, that, that people was would thing. pay their money to see him get beat up by Hulk Hogan. Which is the opposite of how I felt about him in this movie. I really liked Ra- uh, Rowdy Roddy but Piper. But see, that's the thing, too. In this movie, he was a very likable person. But he, he was so good at being bad that people couldn't help but love him because he's so good at what he does. But he so, didn't do so that. So that was his thing. He was the bad guy at oh, yeah. WWF. He was one of the top villains of all time. Probably the best heel of all time. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. But was he always that, that way? Because when I remember watching wrestling when I was like 15, when I started watching wrestling. Was he was in WCW, probably. He was a good guy. Yeah, in WCW, he was a good guy. Uh, that was in like 90... Six, seven, ninety-six. What do they call or him seven? baby faces? What do they call Yeah, him? baby faces. He was a baby face then. That's when I got hooked on him okay. then. Because uh, you know, I was like a, I was like a ten year old kid at the time, totally invested in in into wrestling and and the NWO happened, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. no one could stop the NWO and it was tearing apart my I'm ten years old, I'm a kid, remember this. I did the NWO is tearing up WCW, my my favorite organization. No one can stop Hogan. <laughs> Who could do it? Who could do it? And that was Hot Rod because Hogan never beat Roddy. So when he came in, it was like like for me as a kid, it was like, oh, my God, no, this is the one guy who could stop it all because he's the baddest man on the planet. He'll tell you. Like, I believe he would. Yeah, you no, know, and he's the, the, got one of the greatest minds and mouths ever of all time as far as a promo goes. So, uh, so how does he come into They Live is my question. He was asked by John Carpenter. He was just asked because yep. John Carpenter was a wrestling fan. Yes. Okay. Good. And good choice. John Carpenter wanted um, a guy that looked like the everyday man, which he does. Which he does. Yeah. Pulls it off great in this film. Yeah. And I, I, like I don't know that much about wrestling. I didn't know he was the bad guy, and yeah. that's why I say going into this, like I, he was a likable character that I wanted to and like, he was side a, with. And he's an originator too. Like no one, you guys got to realize, like he walked down to a ring. Uh, in a dress okay essentially it was not a dress but that's what a lot of people conceive a, 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 a kilt. like a kilt he walked it yeah he was nah, in, that's the same thing he was in a kilt <laughs> bro. but at the time when he debuted in a kilt and had a, a bagpipe walking him out like you know bagpipes walking him out as he goes yeah like, yeah yeah playing that along. was yeah dude no one seen that before like he Work like wore a kilt in like people would perceive it as a dress. They don't know what a kilt is. Okay, right. Okay, so you're you're talking about and people think wrestling is real at this time. You know what I mean? Like people hated him, hated him. He's been stabbed. He started riots. Like yeah, like yes. Wow. Like the guy was hated. You know, he said that I've heard stories where he said he would um the first thing he would do after a show is if he would go to eat somewhere, the first thing he would do is he would walk right into the restaurant, go straight to the back, and give the 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 cook twenty dollars not to spit in his food. Hmm. Wow. So, Rowdy Pepper gets invited by John Carpenter to do this movie. Yes. What's the movie about? They Live? What's it about? What's it about? What's the so, fucking movie about? Well, that's the thing, right? What is the movie about? Because so much, I feel like. It's a sci-fi movie, essentially. It's the easy. I feel like the easy storyline is that it's a sci-fi movie, Okay, right? well, one quick question before you even start. What year does this take place in? 90s. The 90s. And I, I, I got that from one of the lines in the movie. Okay. What is the line? Do you I, know? I don't remember exactly don't, what it is, yeah, but they say either. like th- it was one of the news stories or something like that says the 90s. Because it definitely gives the impression. Oh, impre- it was, no, it was the, the Raging 90s. Yes. It yep. was the uh, fashion show. Wow. That's what it was, yep. The Raging 90s. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everybody was wearing flannel. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And yep. fucking so it, fucking <laughs> belts. It takes place kind of. It kind of, it kind of does take place. I think it, safe. it takes place in the in, a, in the future, ish. Yeah. Well, it, it definitely gave me that impression when I first yeah. watched. It. I was like, okay, this is definitely a some sort of post apocalyptic dystopian future, but it felt. A little too close? No, it wasn't. Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. The, it movie, was... the movie was, is from 88? Yeah. Yeah. I would say it probably takes place within 88 to 90. I, I would say, say that it's too. very futuristic at all. The only thing that's futuristic yeah. about it is when he puts the glasses on and you, it's just something he's not seeing, but it's actually happening well, at the same time. question. Did, did people in 88 feel that these encroaching things, police brutality... Uh... Oh, we haven't got into that no, stuff we have, yet. No, we haven't, but what, what I'm asking is... 
do we feel like that the people in 88 had a pretty good idea this is where it was going? Or was no, this I don't like a did. dystopian future where they were like, this is the worst, the worst. If shit goes this way, it's going to get this bad. Yeah. I, I think, think there was some of that going I think on that's, for sure. Yeah, I think that was the mindset behind John Carpenter's thinking. Okay, so okay, so, uh, okay, so what it is is basically um, America has gone, it seems to me like they're in a depression. They're in a depression, and um, Roddy Piper's character is looking for work, and he finds work and then stumbles upon basically um, a... a like almost a, like a revolution group that is pretty much fighting uh, an alien race that, that only they're aware of. That only they're aware of. That is brainwashing basically our world, world, not just America, but world. Yeah, is what I got from it. So there's a hidden layer going on beh- behind regular society, and when. And then when he he discovers this group, he finds a pair of sunglasses that when he yes. puts on, he can see this alternate reality that's taking place. So what I got from the movie was that basically the televisions are sending out a signal to everybody's brains, even when they're off, that is keeping like almost like the Matrix, kind of like the shroud, a cloud over everybody's right. uh, how they could, uh, perceive things with their eyes, I guess yeah. you could say. Uh, but done out with well, their it's minds. not just television, though. I mean, it's all advertisements. I mean, it's, it's, it's newspapers, everything. magazines, it's, it's everything. Yeah. It's advertisement. It's it's printed media. Yeah, you can which which is shown by the glasses when he's looking through the magazine. All the way down to the people ob- obeying everything. So yeah, I mean, the, there's pe- normal people walking around what you would think is normal people, but really they're aliens, and you don't know that until these glasses are put on. You can't see. Does anybody have a, an accurate depiction of what the ratio to that is? Do you think fifty percent of these people were aliens, or it seemed like it. It seemed like, it, seemed that, like yeah. it, yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. They, yeah so I was... at least 50% of the people on here are full of shit, is what this movie is basically saying. <laughs> Along with all of media and all of fucking printed media yeah. and your news. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's basically saying that we are being uh, brainwashed into believing that we to obey, con- like being consumers, to um, obey, reproduce, re- to reproduce, to um, just conform, basically, yeah. to to be happy with what you have, be dumb, be dumb, be dumb, be happy, and create babies. That's it. it. Essentially, is the same thing as the Matrix to some extent. Yeah, just shut up and yeah, be happy with your life and yeah, it's yeah. so so. What you know when you guys saw that like i mean this is 1988 so this is kind of a i i wouldn't say it's a new idea but the way he uh john carpenter showed it or 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 described this possibility this um what would you call it a conspiracy theory maybe uh, even like, just, no, i i think he was basically showing what we're headed to if we don't start taking care of each other well, and just and, st- and and stop looking out for just one. Let's not forget this is this is based on a book, a short story. Okay, uh, which was made written I think in in the sixties, if I'm remember correctly, called Eight o'clock in the Morning. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's basis of the book. And the book in the book the way or in the short story, I'm sorry, uh, it works as the main character is hypnotized, and when he comes out of the trance. Uh, he sees the world as it is, which is an alien race that is controlling everything that happens around us. And he has until 8 o'clock in the morning to solve the problem before his trance-like state goes away, if I remember correctly. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about, like, and uh, there's a lot of John Carter social commentary in here, but the, in terms of the alien aspect, that's already there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It so was that's pre- already, pre- yeah, it's written. already existing. So er, the, the the deals about the advertising and the media is lying to you. I mean, and this, that's well, something this I think also, John Carpenter really. This movie's also about class warfare and, and the depletion of the middle class. And that, that's all from John Carpenter. Yeah. You know, well, I, I will say this. I will say this and we can get into this a little bit later in the show. Um, anybody has read the book 1984? Yes. Um, I feel like this is a. I hate to say the word, but right-wing nightmare of how that goes. If 1984 is about communism and stuff like that, this is about corporatism. This is about plutocracies. This is about uh, a corporate atmosphere telling you what to think and telling you what you should think, and you just stepping in line and doing that thing. 
and it has a very interesting uh, dichotomy towards that book. Well, they it, weren't the late '80s really like the 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 boom of corporate America. Well, I mean, this is after Reagan, right? So Reagan was elected in 1985. So I mean, already, already in, in already in the '80s, there there was what uh, my history. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be perfect here, but it, well, it we wasn't, all wasn't young, there already so. like um, job loss? Wasn't there already a lot of steel mills and a lot of Blue collar there, quote, there, jobs blue, blue that, were, that were that were basically the problem. Declining. The problem with Reaganism was that, as as far as I remember, because I was only like eight, you know, when I really took an interest in it or even cared. He got into listen. politics at eight, ladies. Not and not really like into <laughs> it, but at Smart. least cognitive enough to know what the fuck I was looking at. Was that the understanding was that Wall Street was booming, but blue collar workers were getting kind of shafted a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there. I'm sorry, Twitter, for all the people that are right wing out there. Like, I might be wrong, but um, there is that uh, concession that's out there in history that Reagan was great for Wall Street, but bad for blue collar workers in the middle class. So, do you think that's kind of what they were trying to say? I think I think John I think Carpenter with, was trying to have a voice on that matter. That was yeah. definitely what he was trying to say. I and, also and think, if I remember correctly, did this was this one of the movies where he he himself claims is one of the reasons why he kind of fell out of favor in Hollywood because of what he was saying. It could have been. Could have been. Yeah. Because at the time, I mean, we had a different. Mentality. I mean, think about what, what a lot of rich what movies, people in Hollywood. What movies did he produ- How many movies did he produce after this? Didn't he kind of go on a? When did he do the thing? That I think was, it was a little later. Way, I, I feel like that that's earlier, earlier, earlier. That was earlier. That was, was, earlier. That was, was a little like, earlier. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This big trouble in little China was before this. Wow. Yeah. This is one of it. Yeah. This is. I feel I'm like, actually going to look that up. I want to see. I want to see his his uh, filmography and how what what happens to him. Okay. Post this film. And, well, while and, you're looking that up, Kyle, why don't we take a break and then when we come back, we'll talk more about that. Suppose we settle down. That's far enough. Where'd you get those glasses? Tooth fairy. Oh, bet. You got him. Make yourself shaving this morning. You look as shitty to us as we do to you. Impossible. It would be easier if we don't have to splatter your brains. Just take it easy. And you stumbled onto something here. Maybe we can all benefit from this slight misunderstanding. Hey guys, and we are back. We're, we are. That said that weird. <laughs> we are. We we're are back. Uh, we're back, and we're talking about uh, John Carpenter's They Live um, with Roddy Piper. Uh, and so, uh, what we were talking about is, uh, did, did John Carpenter take a big break after this movie? And Kyle, you looked it up. Did he? Did he take a big break after this movie? Absolutely, he did. How many? How, how many years? Uh, four years, basically. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, well, that doesn't sound like a lot. If you look at his previous previous filmography, going all the way back to essentially 1978 with Halloween, he released a film every single year. Uh, he did take 1985 off. Well, you got to take a year off. Okay. But he released a film every single year up until They Live. After They Live, which was 88, he came back with Memoirs of an Invisible Man in 92. He took yeah. a four-year highest and after that it was another year that's the chevy chase one isn't it it is yeah yeah it is it, it not not a good film not a good film not a good i film. agree yeah and then what follows that is what i would i mean people will probably disagree but i'd say it's his weakest films men the mouth of madness village of the dam escape from la vampires yeah. and ghost of mars i mean it was just well a downward you, you can't decline. talk well except for ghost of mars which was a shot <laughs> up yeah what yeah yeah man, great movie you thought so one of my faves. We'll Did talk about vampires. That later. Was good. Vampires. Vampires is good. I do like it's, vampires. It's 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 not great. It's, it's not good. great. It's it's a weird kind of it's it's his interpretation of a vampire. Movie. Okay. okay. Chris made Chris made a but, bit, Chris made a good point, which was was this movie him saying uh, fuck you to society, or was this his response, or you to said the media to to working in the industry? He basically was working in the industry from seventy six up until eighty eight. I'm sure, and he basically started from the bottom as low budget, and then each successive film kept getting a bigger and bigger budget yep. for him. So when he got to 88, was he just pissed? Was he just done with I it? I think so. I think he was probably a little jaded, a little burnt out. He probably got fucked over by some people, and he probably got to see um, society and the way we function in a different way. Like, well, he probably got to, you know, party with some of the most famous rich people in the world, and he had an opinion on it, and he got to see, like, the lower class people as well, and he had an opinion on it. Well, well yeah, ha- working we, we've in had films, this. I mean, I mean, I think a film set is a great 
is a great way to look at society class as a whole. I mean, you've got you've got your top billed actors who are getting paid ungodly amounts of money to to do their thing, then you have everybody behind the camera. You've got your your grips and your you know your special effects team who are getting paid modest amounts, blue collar dollars mm -hmm. in, in in certain yeah, respects, you can all raise. in the same exact location. Like that's you know, I'm sure after time that's got to eat away at him a little bit. Well, but, I I mean we've had this conversation before. We had this during uh, Big Trouble in Little China about his problems with working with the Hollywood system and how it didn't work out for him and what he wanted to say versus what. They would let him do. He does say he have he had complete tr control over the edit though on this film. On this film, yeah. Okay, so he's. An, I don't know that, that at that point. I would be surprised. If Let's they bring, I mean, based that. on the production <laughs> value, I feel like that that makes sense. Let's I bring mean, that up though, because I mean, there's some shoddy editing in this movie. There's shoddy editing. They're, they're, yeah, shot, yeah. they're shotting fucking uh, uh, special effects. I I would I would honestly say like this is. I mean, I don't want to give away my rating, but. I mean, in terms of John Carpenter films, the message is solid, but I think filmmaking wise, eh, it's a took little, a little bit of a dive. It's a little bit of a slumber. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder if that has something to do with it. Did 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 he not get a lot of uh, backing from Hollywood when he tried to do this? Yeah. Film? Four million. I'll tell I you, he spent four million on the. What he spent on? What did we say he spent on? Uh, Wasn't it like eleven or twelve? I think it was a lot more, right? Yeah. I think on we did what? say on that. On this film? On the big on trouble. Big trouble in Little China. No, yeah, no, big trouble was significant. It had though. to have it a yes. way bigger budget. Well, it may I'll, I will Google as you talk. I, I, I think I think what what I found was the it takes a while to get going. Like it does. Like I think there's about tw the first twenty minutes is real, but I th real slow. Not not a whole lot of dialogue, and uh, you know it just it just kind of gets off to a slow start. But let me ask you this: Do you think that there not being a whole lot of uh, a dialogue was maybe to hide a weak actor and Roddy Piper not saying that he was? Just maybe that was ah. the, per the the perception. I wouldn't be against that. I don't know. I, yeah, I yeah. No, I wouldn't. The be pacing either, is but. too is too. Or, I actually, I actually or, going to disagree with Chris a little bit in terms of the how I felt the film. I actually felt the first, uh, I want to say the first forty minutes, I enjoyed it. They, they, he did, he did a great job in establishing characters and establishing a background for each character. And if you'd actually really start to give a shit, I feel like the back half of the film, basically from the point that the the shanty town gets destroyed, from from the fight scene on is just so quick. It's like it's cut oh, together. Fucking, it yeah. comes out of it nowhere. It happens. It and comes then it's out done. of nowhere. Like, they get in a fight. They get a hotel room. They're at a meeting. Shit happens. Now they're in the alien lair. It's like yeah. it happens within twenty minutes. I agree. It's it 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 just it's almost like he sped up the film at the end. I agree. No, I agree with that. Well, That's... and but is that because the beginning was so slowed down? Like, See, I, I completely agree with what you're saying, Kyle. I do appreciate the character development, and I totally got into it because it made me give a shit about them, right? Which is what kept me going through the movie. But, like, but ultimately, there were moments where I was like, Am I still? Is this still happening? Why hasn't this story moved along a little faster? He does sit there with binoculars all day. He does, yeah. He does. Thank God it doesn't happen in real time. In terms of right? the uh, <laughs> in terms of the beginning of this film, it has a striking resemblance for me to um, First Blood. I like don't a, remember that movie that well. Does, does you do yeah, right? Rambo yeah. First Blood? Yeah, I don't remember. Like it very they're coming well. home and like a transient comes back home and he's not given any jobs. He's not given any m much to deal with, and he makes his own way. He's living on the streets. Uh, people look down on him. Hmm. Yeah, for I don't that. know. Struggle. I, 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 you know what? I'm still going to disagree. Fucking... I'm, I'm going to disagree and say like that. Honestly, the first, I don't want to go off topic here and go into First Blood, but I really enjoy the first first half of First Blood. No, it's a great film, but I, I feel like I it feel added, like the, added much the more. Mi the middle part where he's hiding in the woods just kind of gets slow. Well, the backdrop of that film is that he's a Vietnam vet, and yeah. that people are not respecting when he comes back to the United States. This film... <laughs> Why are we talking about First Blood? I'm <laughs> sorry. Because guess what? That's what we're reviewing today. Yeah, we're, we're actually, I watched, yeah. wait into I it. We took 20 minutes. Movie. Surprise, everybody. We're you doing First me. Blood. I hope you watch the movie, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to argue over First Blood. What I what I want to say is, is the, listen, I think the beginning of the film being that slow is actually a choice but made by John Carpenter. And the reason I say I that... The reason I say that is because listen to the music. He, we all know he does music, right? Yep. Yeah, so, very, very well. Very that, well. Very that, well. That, that, Mood, man. That music sets you up for you're in a depression as soon as that music starts. Boom, boom, boom. It's slow. It's it's almost like a work, like uh, like you're working boom, on the... Boom, like I feel like boom. I could hammer... 
but nails he, with the railroad <laughs> to I it. I want to say something. The but weird thing about this film, you said 88, right? Yes. 88. This is when Reaganism was taken over, and, I mean, people didn't think they were living in a horrible fucking depression at this point. He's predicting I mean, one, though. Yeah. He's predicting one. Based he's predicting off of the greed that if we of continue capitalism going down this road, his he's giving his exactly. political commentary so it has a ve- on what it has a ve- It has happen. a very yes. different message than First Blood. Sorry to go back to it, but it does have a very different message, which is, okay, these soldiers are coming home, and people don't respect them, and then they hate transients, and they hate the fucking you know, poor people in general. It's the same kind of backdrop, but in a different reality, a different mindset that we're saying that okay. corporatism has taken over and we're looking down on these people because they don't fucking fall in line with yes. what they're money. feeding us. No, because they don't have money, so we have nothing in common with so- them. Also, going back to like the cast, because I think the obviously the, I think the strongest person in this movie, Keith David. Oh fuck yes, he, strongest person so in this movie. Good. Has he never not been the guy that's the strongest president in mo- I, most I, films? Yeah, True. I mean, I even I even told Mike earlier today, like I I think he was one of the best characters um, in the thing. Yeah, he's oh. so fucking solid in that movie. I have another one, Requiem for a Dream. Yes, I have another one. It's role, called but very Pitch powerful. Perfect. He was fucking fantastic. Man. Oh god, fantastic. Pitch Perfect, fantastic. Pitch perfect. I'm sorry, <laughs> Pitch Black, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> was he in Pitch Black or Pitch Perfect? He was in Pitch Black. Uh, I'm just joking. He I'm was joking. in both, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nobody saw him. He, he, he sang a song in both. Apparently, oddly he enough. went to Juilliard so he can do. Nobody it all. knows this, but uh, Keith David is a fantastic singer. <laughs> no, uh, he, he's. Uh, I mean, that could be the could, f- the fight scene has influenced so many other things too. But that fight scene that they came up with was amazing. Oh yeah, it's so Hands so amazing. like long. It's Five so long, but it's not twenty three seconds. But it's never boring. I want to. Hey, I want to know. I have a question about the fight scene. The knees to the groin, six of them or something like that. No, Jesus. I don't question that. <laughs> I don't question that. When you're in a fight, you do what you got to do. My question is, wh- what's with the reaction when he breaks the back window? Keith David reacts as yes, he bets his about car, this. and he goes, you motherfucker. And then was he goes, that, oh, dude, I am so no, sorry. I, I don't it, understand no, that. No, I, I get it. The fight went too far. They started bringing okay. weapons in. When it, it, so he legitimately took a swing at him with a two-by-four. So that like, wasn't his no, no, What you're saying me. is that wasn't his car. No, no, yeah. I'm saying it's not his, he was, his no, car. No, he didn't have a car. I'm saying yeah, that's what I thought. I think when you said it. I looked at that fight as this is two guys who have been through fucking hell in their life recently, and they have so much pent-up rage and aggression that they're literally going to the most extreme fist fight over a pair of fucking sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not... Be, I don't think it's because of the sunglasses. I think it's because of so much... You've ever like, been it's, in that? Yeah, no. So, much, so, stress much, so much stress and shit stress. in your life that you just ready some to motherfucker, snap. Some motherfucker who you think just murdered a bunch of people wants you to put on sunglasses. You're done. You're like, you know what? Fuck this. But yeah, he I'm still done. gives I'm him out. money, which is... But I think I think I think. But see, here's like, no. Here's the thing. Yeah. Keith David knew what was going on. His character knew what was going on. It, I don't think he knew exactly what was going on, but he knew something was going on in that church. He didn't want to see it. He didn't want to see it because, yeah. he, like he said, he's like, I got a family and kids. I don't need this shit. So he knows that he right. wanted to keep the blinders on. So yeah, he exactly. Can go on he, life he, and he's just representative try to make money. of that. The vast majority of the public apathy? that was being no, no, not apathy. Well, no. Not really apathy as much as they Something were, might be going on, but I, what can listen, I do about it? The system is telling me no, that I, I should believe I this thing, it. and I'm just going to go along with it because if you fight against it, it's if almost like If you fight like he, against it, you're, 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 you're sticking out it, in the crowd. Yeah. And you, and it's you, almost like he had a subliminal understanding that, look, I know this is being done to me, but if I fight against it, bad things will happen to me. So it's almost like he's kind of realized in it, but not... To the extent that Roddy oh, yeah, Piper is exactly, I think he knows that there's a little bit going on. So that's why, which I, is crazy, because if you look at the be- begin at the beginning part of the film, like Roddy Wright Piper is the one who is like, I believe in America. You know, give me an honest day's work for an honest wage. I'll take the opportunity when it shows Wait. up. And Keith David is like, fuck society. Then when when finally he even talks Keith about David violence. Went, yeah, when Keith David finally has an opportunity to 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 verify all of the all of the the, the theories that he's basically had about how society's purposely fucking the lower class he has nothing to do with it and it's just a crazy dynamic it's a right. change yeah. I, I feel like he he's a member of that lower class and he doesn't want to lower his caste any further yeah he doesn't ruffle any feathers man yeah. he's got a family that, that's <laughs> what she did what you know once he puts the glasses on what happened to them 
Nothing. No, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Fucking aliens walk around. It's what about like the game changer? I think. What about who game I think? Changer. What about who I think is the the weakest character in the movie? I think I think Holly. 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 For sure. Fucking terrible. Very bad. How did scary, she look? scary looking Meg Foster? <laughs> she looks like a corpse. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with, you, with this film. Her, the, her the face one, has no motions. <laughs> the like, no motion. They don't move. And those eyes. They just her eyes they are pierce, open and her lips move ever so slightly and she, then words come out. They like, pierced into my soul. Yeah, they were on fire. Those contacts. Yeah. That had to be contacts, right? It's a weird. I, no, it's a weird, I don't think it's so. A weird thing were they green the, eyes? No, I don't know. They're weird. Chinese. Were they green? I, I tried not to stare into them because I was afraid it was going to turn into John stone. John Carpenter like green eyes. I'm, I'm, you, starting, you to, I'm starting to make a th- fan this theory. This might here. be a might be a foot fetish with a uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino. Same thing. But I just <laughs> a parallel I to that. I do not understand the way she played her character. It was so. Robotic. Down, thank you. Downtrodden was was robotic. Was she, say, but very she's, robotic. And I, and I hate to say it because I mean, essentially what her character represents is Roddy Piper puts trust in her, and then she ends up being a member of the enemy. Essentially, Which, I was like, is that why she has creepy eyes? We're never really supposed to trust her because she acts weird throughout. Yeah, the, the know, whole I never thing. Yeah, but I, I, I don't her get. Ass. I don't get exactly. that from the film. She doesn't seem like she has any. Well, she had the baddest scene ever, though, in that movie. What? What's when she cracks him with the bottle and then throws oh his ass God, out the that window? Was awesome. Dude, what is, so is that? Is that was that glass made of was as thin as fucking like tissue Not paper? So it was awesome. sure, Who sure gets glass thrown glass window. into a window? It scared and it the shatters. shit out of me. <laughs> me too. Because I didn't see. It. I every time I've seen this movie a couple times, I never see it coming. I never see me it coming. either. Because and maybe because of her performance, she's just it's like, so fast. Psh, woof, back throws him out the window. You're like, holy. Crap. Real quick. And then he rolls down like a, a hundred foot hill. Back to that fight. Uh, something funny about that because you know everybody jokes and laughs about how the length of the fight, right? Yeah. That's kind of like a running joke. So Desiree um, was watching it with me, and I was kind of like dozing. Your off. girlfriend? Yes, yes, I was kind of dozing off during that part, and I woke up to her saying. Is this fight still happening? <laughs> she's, never, she's never seen the movie before, but out loud to herself while I was obviously sleeping, she's like, I can't believe this fight is still going well, on. Well, right I, really? Because I don't find that fight boring whatsoever. I don't no. find it boring. No, no, it's, it's not just, that it's, it's boring. Comical. It's not that it's boring. It's that you realize how long it's going well, on, even somebody who has no indication of it. From what I've what, what I've read about John Carpenter and his commentary on that fight is that he didn't even see it as being something that was too long or whatever. And then everybody made a big deal after South Park made a big deal out of it. No, I know. I think that existed before South yeah, Park. I, agree. I mean, I believe yeah. it did, but I remember him making a commentary about it. Like, when I first shot that, I didn't ever think, like, I wasn't trying to make the longest fight scene of all time. I was just trying to make a fight scene. Right. A which cool is so fight weird scene. because it's so rare to see a fight scene that just goes on like a guy's on the ground he's yeah. done and he gets back up and then another guy gets down yeah and then he's back up again exactly it's so it doesn't say anything much about the characters other than maybe they're just like people that don't want to give up it kind of it kind of says something because i mean keith david said you know this is the game you're going to do everything you can but i'm going to do everything i can to blow your ass away and it's yep. almost like not, neither of them want to give up. They, neither of them want to give in because it's almost like it's failure, and they failed so much And the crazy thing life. is that like, Keith Davis just doesn't want to wear why... glasses. That's all he wouldn't want to do. Really? I, dude, it, 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 dude it, if I thought that you went off and killed about 40 people in a bank... I, and you told me, hey, uh, yeah, put on right. these glasses. I'd say, go fuck yourself. I'm let not putting me, any glasses. Let me, let me go back. Not you're, putting you're, any glasses. You're 100 percent right, and I agree with you. If somebody, if you, one of you guys came <laughs> up to me and said, hey, "Listen, I killed 40 people in a fucking bank robbery, uh, the alleged bank robbery." But if you put on robbery. these glasses, you'll understand why. <laughs> but like, once you wear these, I don't want nothing to I'd do with like, whatever you got. Off. Kyle Smith is bad <laughs> shit crazy, and I ain't gonna wear these glasses. Change your life. <laughs> hey guys, when we come back, we're gonna find out if Kyle will actually put on the glasses. <laughs> we'll be right back. Already wearing. Will them. you wear the glasses? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh shit! Oh. <laughs> Has a shotgun. White male, 30s, long hair. Mama don't like tattletales. Wearing sunglasses. Hey guys, we're back and we're talking about John Carpenter's They Live. 
Um, so some of the things that I kind of have a little bit of trouble with in this movie, and I, I really do like this movie, but I got to point out the pacing. It, it is wonky at times. It does go from super slow to super quick, and I'm all right with it when it's super slow. I actually really enjoy it, but when it starts picking up, I'm like, what the hell happened? Yeah, like, almost like it skips scenes. It does. I, I, like somebody dropped the script and there, they just there are is, the that, is the editing that way too <laughs> towards the end of the film? Does it feel like it just jumps into some stuff where you're yeah. like, how'd they get there? I don't like, think I don't think the editing is the problem. I think it was a writing choice. I, I definitely think if you read this script and I haven't, so if anybody out there has read the script and I'm mistaken, <laughs> I feel there are gaps in time yes. that exist in this film where they're just trying to Rush the film, get get to the point, get to the point, get to the fo- political. Then concept. there could have been Please a better. To the microphone, Mike. There could have yeah. been a better way to tell that. Then I f- I feel like they there didn't achieve a telling that story because I didn't get it. I was just like, what the? F- yeah, why no, that like, like I already pointed out, or like I pointed out a little bit earlier in the show was like the it, it, everything feels like it's in real time, all the way up until he finds the sunglasses and he gets in a fight with Keith David. Yeah, and then after that. It's, it's like boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. boom. Well, All no, of a sudden, they're they're in a hotel. They 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 got themselves a room. Now they're suddenly at this this thing. Now they're in a shootout. Now I, they're well, in a news station. It's I, like, I I do feel there is some missing information. They sped in, it up at the end. I do feel there's just some missing information in terms of the backstory of these characters. Like why why is Roddy Piper so interested in what's going on in the church? Why is he so curious about everything? Why is he? I don't think that's missing. I don't. I don't, I don't really he think he gets it, sucked if that in by the preacher. He gets sucked in by the preacher. Right. In see, the beginning. He sees the preacher mouthing the words off the TV. I see him almost as like a kind of a. He, he comes across as like a philosopher, sort of like or you like think that's his like somebody who's kind of just observing, looking around, like always like taking it in. Like that's that's the impression I got with him. Walking through this the city with his backpack, he's like really ob- observing it's just, it's his just, surroundings. It's just a weird dichotomy from his original point to make to Keith David, which is like, oh, I believe in America and I believe that everybody's going to be fine. To go from, you know what? Never mind. I'm super curious as to what how you still, America you can has still been... believe in America and be one and won't be wondering why. This guy is in this church till four in the morning. Right, but he he doesn't espouse and, any kind of like conspiracy theory. No, attitude. he's not. He, and then he's he just the, gets the, thrust into it immediately. The, yeah, he's the average one thing. He's the average fucking guy who stumbles upon something kind of off. He finds a tape recorder with the with the with the choir singing. He's like, "That's right. fucking weird." There's that a bunch weird. of boxes in this church. That's fucking weird. I'm gonna watch this church and find out more. I my in my curiosity has been piqued, and I think that's a very natural thing. I think any. Any of us would do that. You I don't know would about any of do, us. You but... would fucking do that, Mike. Don't take no, the high road. I would. Road on I would. This. But I'm. I'm the most. Why fucking... do you got? Why do you got to take the high road for everyone else? Then just, just talk to you for yourself. But you would I, fucking do it. I'm a skeptical person, and I don't. I'm a very cynical person. So yes, I would do that. But I didn't feel like his character, when introduced into the story, was that way at all. I feel like he walks into a town, thinks he's going to get a great job. I don't know what construction or whatever. No, he didn't think he was going to get a job at all. I don't think. I think he realized like I think he, he looked desperate. Yeah. No, I know. I understand he looks desperate, but he still has some hope that like. He America still says is going to fix in everything, America. and it's, he believes in the American values. He, just, yes. he wants an honest day's work, and he thinks the opportunity will eventually come. I want, I want to talk about something else. Roddy Piper's uh, acting choices in this film. There's a lot of laughs in this film. He laughs a lot. That is him. It's a cynical, but it's a cynical. It's like kind of after, laugh. yeah, but it's like after a sentence, right? It's almost like, like a, well, it's it, it, like he'll see something and he'll go through it. Like he puts the glasses on, he starts seeing the aliens, and then he starts laughing about it as if he, as if he's not really surprised by it. No, as if almost like I kind of always thought. Think this about, about it. This. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. now going back to what you're saying. Like he he does state that he believes in America, but after being fucked so many times. You gotta, you gotta imagine when all of a sudden you find out what's really going on. It's just like, of course, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Of course, it would be like this, yeah. and that would be my reaction as well in that situation. Of course, it'd be more shit on top of shit. Yeah, of course, it okay. couldn't get worse. It just fucking did. <laughs> right? What the hell? What else is gonna happen? Right. So I have a qu- a, qu- a quick question. So yeah, ask it. You know when they walk into? Don't the, be shy. Just ask it. The bank. It's like a banquet. <laughs> Don't hold back, Chris. Yeah, it's like a banquet, and the guys up there on the on the stage. Why are you talking? holding back? Why Why do are some of the people, aliens, and others not. Beca- no, because they, they they addressed that. They said that um, they are using money and power, like as and and wealth, 
as uh, a way to get sell because they said the police force is half human and some of them even work for them because of they're giving them wealth basically. Okay. So they're yeah. basically saying like because we'll, uh, uh, like humans will sell whoever down the river for some wealth for their basically. for their plan to really work. They really do need the help of the Americans that are in that upper class that you know one percent or whatever the fuck they need them to help get their plans into action and We're... get and get the American people sold on their plans. I didn't understand why the bum became a member of that group though. Was that the bum or am I fucking confused? The was... bum. Explain the bum. I'm sorry. The bum the that bum that watches T V. The bum that's watched T V is in a tuxedo oh, okay. at the end. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, all yeah, yeah. Okay. he's like, I didn't know they recruited you boys as well. Like, why is he in that group? Is he I don't. I couldn't well, explain that. I he could have. He could have divulged information. Maybe he knew information about the church. Maybe oh, he was okay. the one. Oh. Maybe he was the one who oh. gave up the information I, I'm gonna, about I'm get the some church. Cold. Boom. <laughs> I'm gonna, fan theory. Cold film and review. Fan theory. <laughs> I'll. I'll do a. a That's cold, like a fart. I'll a have boom. a cold war <laughs> moment right now. Unfortunately. Um, and this is not. I'm not trying to make a political commentary about what's going on today presently but but he is but this is going to be a hundred percent probably political. will be it probably and a hundred percent on commentary today <laughs> um the poor <sighs> never mind just oh god, god. Do it. I'm that not... kind oh, of build up you bail blue balls bail dude i can cut it out if it's if it's terrible chris you were gonna ask something what did you say you were gonna ask something earlier he did yeah go ahead don't be shy <laughs> no, I did ask he already it. Did ask. Oh, you did. Did, yeah. did anyone hear what he asked? You answered it. Oh, did I? Okay. No, <laughs> you I was... actually were the one who answered. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Uh, so one of the other things I want to talk about is uh, this is like uh, John Carpenter is one of my favorite directors Easy. all the time. If you, oh yeah, if and rightfully ever, so. If you're ever here, I, I call him JC. Yeah. In the studio all the time because uh, to me in filmmaking he's my personal JC. He's, yeah, he's, he's a, a prophet of filmmaking. He, he is. is the Lord, the King of Kings. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of. There's a to, lot. No, no <laughs> I, I just I love John Carpenter films. I love that he makes his own music for his films. Um, he's, I love the mood that he creates yes. in all of his films. And, yes, and he definitely had a message on this film. Now, saying that, I I I don't know, man. Like I felt like he kind of he had a message and he had such a strong thing to say, but he displayed it in a, in a. He misses it at the end, man. He just for me, he screws it up at the end. Okay, yeah. can I say something? Yeah, I think it's because of the same thing we've talked about. Well, this this episode will not be released, but it will be released very soon. About what we talk about with wizards, like trying to tackle a big idea in such a short amount of time, in such a short amount of time, and then kind of losing yourself in the ideology of it, and then losing yourself as where you were going with it in terms of yeah. Like how you he, were trying to get probably, presented. I, he he probably was just exhausted. He, he was probably been. just just tired of a lot of stuff, and he wanted to say what he wanted to say. And and like I I guarantee there was probably some issues on set, just like there's been issues on a lot of his other uh, other films with budget or production and that shit. And he just was fucking exhausted. He's like, whatever. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this together. Basically, I, give a middle finger to the film industry because he really kind of did. I, I, I feel I feel this way with uh, Ralph Bakshi, who we've talked about, I, I, uh, John Waters, and even John Carpenter. It's I want to make the film that I want to make, but I have to do it in a realm where um, I'm going to get constant ridicule and I'm going to get constant backlash about it. And how do I find the happy medium to get this film made and still get my message out? And I feel like, yeah, no, that makes sense to me. Like we, we we know we've talked about this with Big Trouble in Little China. I don't know that about this film. I don't know how much artistic expression he had in this film and how he had the final cut on this film. Yeah, I what thought you, Chris said he had final say on the. Cut. Yeah, he did. He had fine. He had final say on the edit. He he. he well, agreed. maybe maybe that's possibly why this film didn't. I mean, it definitely doesn't. Feel like it has the budget of Big Trouble in Little China. No, 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 no. It, it doesn't. The, no. A lot of the sets and a lot of the shots are very, are are very low budget. Mm -hmm. um, especially, especially towards the end, even the sh the the shootout. You know, at the e at towards the the end when they're at the meeting. Yeah, like when they're going down the alley, like it just feels really cheap and it doesn't. It feels like the smallest set they could possibly afford. Like I guess the question I'm going to ask is, did he did he achieve what he was trying to do, and that's why this film is what it is. Or 
did he have some hesitation? I think he achieved it. I think he. I think he, he achieved it also. He he had he had a vision. He had he had an opinion. He wanted to get out, and I think he did it. Chris, yeah, I didn't you have a question? No. Didn't you say something? I'm pretty sure you had a question. Don't <laughs> don't hold back, Chris. <laughs> don't, Chris. Don't be afraid to ask the question. Don't hold back. Didn't you say? Oh, so, all wasn't right. a question like I hated Keith Davis death or something like that? No, or, oh, no, I no. do. I you, do. If no, he, hold if on. I hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, I got it. And it's not that. It's not that. But my question was, <laughs> I, 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 no. Go. I don't like the way he died. I think it was a shitty, shitty ending. He should have just gone up with in flames with the top of that building. Like, if anything, why did he? And that cut was so weird. Like when she pulled the trigger against his head, you just see a flash, and then it just cuts to like and, some and, random thing. And the weird thing is that Roddy Piper doesn't have any like. He doesn't address it. He didn't hear a gunshot just go off behind. They, him. They, they, she gets they, up been, there and he's like, "Did you they, kill they, my friend with two fuck with a family with two they, daughters?" Like, dude, he doesn't even why would okay? They have just gone through this building, gunning down soldiers, alien soldiers. Okay, and why would one more gunshot really? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not he just that. left the his very friend fact and this that she chick walked together up without him. Means that obviously she betrayed. Well, them. he and knew that he right ran, away. He, he ran. He ran. He had. He had fucking. He had fucking tunnel vision. He saw the fucking this the, the way to save the world, and he's fucking running up those stairs trying to get to that satellite. He's not paying attention to what's behind him, and it's not until he's ready to shoot it is then he's like, "Oh shit, are you guys clear? I'm gonna fucking shoot this right, thing." Right, but but my question is is when she shows up and she pulls the gun on him. Does she? Does he, does Roddy Piper acknowledge the fact that he's killed my friend? Yes, I would think he thought that immediately when she he turned when, around when and she, she was said, the only one. When there. she says, "I'm clear," and then he's like, "What the fuck?" And then he realizes what's going on. If he's not up there, why is he not up there? If he's not dead, what? What are you talking Keith about? David. Keith David does he's not dead. show up. He's dead. Does Roddy Piper understand that he is dead? Yes. And that the betrayer that is up on this roof right now is. How are you confused on this? I'm not confused on it. I'm asking why he doesn't give a shit. What do you mean? Because be, be, he doesn't give a shit because now the person that he's put his trust into has killed his friend. And he's like, do you think that what take, the fuck? That, that takes a precedent. Again, again, he's just hit another point of can this get any fucking worse? And it just did. His, huh. his Someone he trusted just killed his only friend in this city. I what, get, I, he's at a point he's like. Hands in the air, just like, whatever. Yeah, what the fuck? You, I'm going to fucking shoot the satellite dish still. With, with that being said, I think you changed my mind on that. Thank you. Very good. Very good job. How did I change your mind? How was your mind in any other place? Because I didn't see Roddy Piper as being some kind of weird cynic that was just like, well, my friend's dead, but you know what? It's not He's worth- trying to save the it's world. Not, it's not worse than what's going to happen. And they knew they were going to die. Yeah, he knew they that were gonna he gonna wasn't going gonna to get down from that fucking oh, building. Oh, yeah, they knew. So you, he had one said, way out. Yeah. Over jumping the edge, you're going the downstairs. moment he walked in there was a suicide mission, he knew. Yes. yes. Yeah, because okay. they say when they were getting all the guns, uh, to go, they were like, we need a strike team. I think you pretty much know, like, they hit him hard and fast. You're not coming back. Yeah. All you're right. No, back. no, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. That's That's what I think. That's... Pretty accurate. Mm. All right, guys. So, how are we gonna rate this? I'm saying we rate it sunglasses. <laughs> how many sunglasses would you give it? Can okay. we do that? Is uh, that uh, too hard to come up with, Chris? On, I don't know. On, I don't know. It's very shop. difficult. What, what's a sunglass? I don't think anybody knows what that is. <laughs> I think I can do that. How about, how about Just, packs of gum? Oh, we could do packs of gum. You could pack gum. Nah. Or we could do the soda. All out of bubble gum soda. Uh, All out of bubble gum. Bubble gum. No. No, no. I didn't oh, pick bubble this gums, movie. So bubble gum's too difficult for oh. Chris. Chris, you had a question. Sunglasses are. Don't fine. hold back, Chris. Chris, you said you had a question, right? Don't hold back. Just what say was, it. No, go ahead. Say what's on your mind. Yeah. No, we'll stop the show for your question. My question. My question is, um, um, what did you guys think of <laughs> sun, sunglass vision? You mean in terms of how it changed the film? Visually, in terms of visually. Why did it turn things black and white? Yeah. Because it was the the it was the color spectrum filter they had applied to it. Oh, color spectrum filter. Well, did they they say that in the movie? Yeah. No, they don't say that in the film. They say they say something about the <clears throat> the, the spectrum or something when he's just uh, when they're talking about building the. Glasses. Definitely heard the word spectrum. I will say that <laughs> the. Uh, well, it, it does, you you can be smart and just say that's why because they're yeah. cutting out all the other spectrums of color so you can see past the smart fucking for shit. Yeah, it's not blur. It's not. Boom. Bl- it's not. It's not Knowledge blurring drop you. with sunglasses on. 
knowledge drop. Can I do a book with a pair of sunglasses on it? Could you please? For the rating? Could, could you please? Yeah. <laughs> you please? <laughs> All right, let's rate this film. Please, All please. right, guys. Uh, I'll go first. Um, I really enjoy this movie um, for lots of reasons. I just, number one, I just love the way the, the aliens look. Um, I really enjoy the first half of the film more than the second half. I know that sounds weird because the second half is pretty much all action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I love the first half of the film. I love that buildup. It's a slow buildup, but I think it does allow you to get the characters and you do get a great character development out of it. I think Roddy Piper's fantastic in the movie. Um, Keith David steals the show, though. Um, Meg Foster is, cr- I don't know. I just don't like her. No. <laughs> I don't like her. There's, there's, I just She plays... Everything like uh, she's like a cardboard box in this film, and I don't know if that's <laughs> the direction she got or or what. But she's, I, I she's, want you to act like a box yeah, of can rocks. Just, can you just act like a cereal box? I think I, I feel like her character <laughs> but of was like just brand there. cereal, boring. <laughs> I feel brand. like her, her character was just there to to move the plot forward. She was a box of grape nuts. Yeah, she, that's she was she like was. an <laughs> object. Unfortunately, she was a box of grape nuts. Yeah. No one wanted to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I just like I just didn't like when she was on That screen. is the worst cereal. That <laughs> really is. <laughs> that being said, um I'd have to give this movie four sunglasses. Uh is it perfect? No. Is it the best John Carpenter movie? No. It's not. But is it a, a solid film and is the message behind it um at least get you thinking? And mm. I think films, you know, I do enjoy some films that do that but are also entertaining. Because I know someone would throw other comments at me, but it's got to be entertaining also, which I think this one uh, has something to say and is also entertaining. Okay. Yes. So, uh, four sunglasses for me. Who's next? Go for it, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. You're so enthusiastic. Okay, I'm going to give this four sunglasses right off the bat. Um, I kind of disagree with you in that uh, it's a film that is one of a, not his best film. I actually feel like this is one of his best films. Absolutely. I think that uh, he had a lot, his hands are all over it, and it's great, and I feel like he's making a social commentary, and I think it's fantastic. My only qualms with the film is actually, to disagree with you, Roddy Piper's performance, unfortunately. Um, I think it fits the film well, but at the same time, it's also, it's not great. I don't think you get it. What, should have been Kurt Russell? (laughs) I don't think you get it. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if it should be Kurt Russell. Uh, I don't know who could have played this role. I, it, Kurt Russell. There's could have. no. I, if, you, if we were playing the remake game, I could not do it. I do think Kurt Roddy Piper. Russell, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell for every character. <laughs> it, it could be. Every film would be better without with Kurt Russell in it. I think so. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, four for me. Kyle, how many sunglasses uh, would you give this? Um, I'm gonna give it a. I'm also gonna give it a four. I was thinking three and a half, but. Mostly because it's not... I'm going to disagree with Mike and agree with Cody. It's not John Carpenter's best film. There's other stuff out there that he's done that's more, that I think is, is much more solid. Um, he does have a fantastic story, and he does a great job of making you really give a shit about the characters in the first half of the film. I agree with Cody. I think the back half of the film is rushed. I don't feel like I have enough time to uh, soak in what's actually happening, and the ending just kind of happens. Um so yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with the four four sunglasses. Four. It's not perfect, but it's hell of enjoyable. It's damn good though. It's damn it's good. Damn good. His future's so bright, he's gonna need some shades. Chris, how right. many sunglasses would you give it? All right. Um, I'm probably gonna give it a three and a half. You would. Mm. You I'm would. gonna give it a three and a half. Because yeah, you would. I do really like this movie. I love the message. Um. I love the style of the film. I think it's hilarious. I love the fight scenes. There's so much that to love about the film, but for me, um, I really did feel like I agree with what you guys are saying, except for the part that the end didn't feel rushed. I realized it moved faster than the beginning, mm-hmm. but I didn't feel rushed on it. I feel like I got everything I wanted, and I feel like he really gave you gave you everything you might have been expecting to see in a John Carpenter film. Um, it, the pacing was a little off for me. Uh, I love the characters, but Meg Foster, yeah, she she kind of brought brought the mood down. I Is mean, it Meg Foster that lowered it down <laughs> to a three and a half for yeah, you? Can we all agree that Meg Foster has ruined this film for us? <laughs> I said, like, for nobody said nothing any, that's anything why, that's nice why about this movie Meg Foster. Didn't get a five. I enjoyed yeah. I enjoyed <laughs> I enjoyed Roddy Piper's uh, 
I thought his performance, performance was, was really good. good. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was really good. Ah. I, I, I would have looked. Dude, for a wrestler, <laughs> what the hell did a bird just fly just through? In here? <laughs> and acting? That's a low bar to set for a wrestler. No, he's oh, good. Like God. the Rock is pretty goddamn so, good. So yeah, so three. Pretty damn he is though. Three and a half sunglasses. He's a good actor. Three and a half sunglasses. He was in the Scorpion King. <laughs> Fantastic film. Yeah. By the way, next week we're doing the Scorpion King. Hey. No, we're not doing that at all. Chris, we are not. Chris gave it. Three and a half sunglasses. Three and a half Thanks sunglasses. for re-announcing that for me. Yeah, no, like, but, uh, so Meg Foster, I want to find this out. Did Meg Foster really lower it to a half a point for you, or? Yeah, I really disliked her. Was that really, <laughs> that was really the reason? Wow. No, 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 that wasn't the only reason. The okay. pacing was another No, reason. the okay. pacing is, yeah, dude, the first half of the film or second half of the film, you have a problem with the pacing? First half. First half? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, me too. Really? Yeah. I see it, and it's weird, because me and Kyle, I feel like, are on the opposite spectrum. We love the pacing of the first yeah. half. I really like when I think it started it, picking I, up I and think the it, action started it, coming I in. think it gets you in the mood better for the fact that they're in, like, a depressed society. I think you get the mood for that more because it is a little bit slower and a little sludgy, I'll say, at times. And I think that, but that is on a, a choice. Mm-hmm. It's definitely yeah. a choice. Yeah, I think it was done well. It was yeah. it's slow, but in a good way. It gave it gave time to, to birth the, the, the care about the character until Meg Foster threw him out a window. You were just like, what the fuck was that? Such a badass scene. True, too. It was. True, too. All right, guys. That's our show for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure you uh, follow us on Facebook, and you can also follow us on Twitter at Cult film underscore review same for instagram that's cult film underscore review you can follow mike at uh his blog neighborhood friendly neighborhood filmmaker making making or making uh, <laughs> fr- uh, you can follow me on friendly neighborhood filmmaking.com and oh, as <laughs> hold on and as always for any fans out there that have a uh, pick something that we have missed please Reach out to us on Twitter. Reach out to us on Facebook. Even Instagram. I don't give a shit if just a photo. And it's just like, that's what you want me to do. And Fine. S- we'll do it. Some some fan picks are coming up. So We are. Uh, next you know, week. Next week. for that. And I just want to say, um, you know, it sucks we lost Roddy Roddy Piper. I agree. Absolutely. Um, Condolences to his whole family. Mm-hmm. For real. Yeah. Chris, what? You had a Chris question? Chris, stop you holding back. Yeah, when, can we, when can stop we really back. end the show? Can you right. stop holding back? We can end the show right now. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs>